I believe it was a very inspiring first uh, presentation of this panel dedicated to uh, cultural landscapes. Um, but I propose we move to, forward to Tibor Hartel uh, and um, listen to his presentation. Uh, Tibor Hartel uh, graduated uh, the Faculty of Biology and Geology from the Babes Boyo University. Uh, his PhD focused on population ecology and landscape ecology using amphibians as model organisms. For a while, he studied the aspects of ecology and conservation of traditional landscapes in uh, Romania. Following a postdoctoral fellowship, respectively Alexander von Humboldt, Germany, Tibor uses a social ecologic approach to understanding the limits and possibilities of biodiversity conservation in rural, rural and urban uh, landscapes. His recent articles addresses the institutional and social aspects of biodiversity conservation. Uh, without any further ado, uh, Tibor, thank you. You have the floor and we are looking forward to hearing your presentation about sustainability of urban green systems. Thank you and the floor uh, is- Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, it is a great pleasure to, to be here. And uh, I have 30 minutes, isn't it? Yes. And uh, uh, before I start, um, I try to share the screen. Um, here it is. I think, please tell me if it is okay. Yes. Okay. So um, I am an ecologist uh, who is uh, shifting toward uh, urban issues. And um, my hope is to bring some, I don't know, it can be fresh perspective or, or uh, some, some different perspectives in, uh, in the debate, which, is, which are complementary uh, with hopefully with the, with the previous talks. And um, I'm sorry if, uh, um, if there will be a little bit of uh, internet issues uh, during the, the talk. So I will, um, I will start with, um, with um, a slide where um, about, uh, which is about um, a call for rethinking ecology. Uh, recently, it was a, it was a um, special issue in a very uh, a good ecology journals, journal where ecologists realized that there is a need for a new type of ecology, uh, who, which is translational. They call it translational ecology. Uh, uh, people with ecological, strong ecological backgrounds, but also with strong social skills, uh, policy, conflict management, resolution, and psychology uh, knowledge, uh, who can uh, translate the, the, ex the robust ecological knowledge to the decision makers and to the society in order to transform this knowledge into uh, how it is called uh, actionable knowledge, knowledge types which are based on which people can make decisions and act. Uh, my presentation is uh, rather a call for rethinking uh, uh, our disciplines and uh, the relationship between our disciplines in order to advance um, urban sustainability. I'm coming from a rural landscape ecology uh, background. So uh, is, is my fir first talk for, for uh, this type of uh, conference. Um, I will start with uh, three types of emergencies, what the society feel, feels. And, um, and these uh, emergencies are very acute in the urban, um, urban uh, societies. Uh, first are the, the everyday emergencies. Um, now with the lockdown period, we know uh, uh, how difficult it is to navigate uh, all kinds of unexpected things in our lives. Um, and um, during the summer and also when in periods when there are uh, more restricted uh, lockdowns, the number of people uh, going out to nature, to, to parks, to the natural environment is exploding. And uh, the, in fact, uh, this lockdown period was for uh, some of my colleagues in Cluj and myself, also a, a real world laboratory type of, uh, of event because, because indeed several areas were uh, flooded by people and, um, and many of, of them were not culturally prepared to, to behave in a way 
uh, that uh, to, to protect that natural environment. So you can see everywhere the remnants of, of these visits. And, and if the, the lockdowns are intensifying and uh, if we should consider this as a scenario, therefore we need to rethink uh, the role of uh, green spaces in the urban society and the potential demands, but also the threats of the human societies uh, towards uh, these uh, uh, environments. So that, um, and I go to the next level to the conceptual uh, emergencies. Uh, the, the, it seems that from a sustainability perspective, we don't have agreed concepts on, on based on which we can uh, develop gover governance systems and policies. Uh, we are very sectorial in our approach and thinking, and a lot of knowledge is, um, is locked in different sectors and also the decision makers are very sectoral. And um, it seems that this type of approach, even if it is well done professionally, will be unable to, co to, uh, to, uh, uh, pro uh, to face the growing complexity of, of the urban society and uh, the environmental issues. So that we need new concepts, but these new concepts, uh, uh, many sustainability scientists say, uh, will be developed uh, as a co-production between different disciplines and not just one discipline. Uh, <clears throat> the existential issues are also highly visible in the urban areas. And um, basically many people ask, what kind of future I will have in, in this place where I live and what kind of uh, uh, future I would like to, to have. These are those questions which are possibly now more uh, intensively emerging in the society than ever before. Uh, so that these emergencies need to be addressed. And um, uh, I highlighted the conceptual one because the academia's contribution, I am a university person, uh, could be significant uh, at the conceptual level. <clears throat> to generate science, uh, good quality science, uh, good quality science is generated when the questions are good. And um, <clears throat> this is the job of academic uh, university uh, sector. Um, so in this presentation, um, I will uh, talk about um, system, how the values can represent leverage points for sustainable transformations in the cities. Uh, the pre I start, uh, uh, I, I assume my, my uh, talk on the fact that, that values of people are uh, basically uh, disconsidered in, um, <clears throat> or virtually disconsidered. Of course, it can be some exceptions and we need to collect those and to analyze, to understand them. But, uh, but um, everywhere we look in the ur urban, uh, urban space, it seems that, that uh, there is some kind of revolt regarding, from the society regarding uh, the formal decisions uh, related to the urban uh, um, and peri-urban green spaces, which is okay because uh, this shows that uh, the society is empowering. Um, this is driven by, by values and fairs. And uh, also this can represent huge opportunities uh, for transformative change, the development of new culture. And um, in the previous talk also, we, we saw how, how beautifully uh, the green spaces are mapped in, in uh, big details. And in fact, the, the society will be through its institutions, formal or informal, the fertile ground to maintain all those values in a sustainable way. So we need to consider the society and the value systems also uh, more intensely. I will talk about uh, uh, human uh, nature connections uh, to present new conceptualizations in this rep respect. Maybe it will help uh, thinking and also um, the the transdisciplinary approaches. Uh, I will not talk about them, but this is the term for uh, for uh, bringing together different uh, sectors, uh, interest groups, and um, and uh, specializations in order to develop co-develop uh, um, proper knowledge and solutions for urban sustainability. <clears throat> the transdisciplinary approaches uh, right now are missing in Romanian. Uh, 
not only in the urban uh, management, uh, green space management, but also in the rural and protected area management uh, are missing. <clears throat> Here is the leverage point. Point, uh, uh, framework for sustainability. This are, uh, is uh, developed by my colleagues from Lineburg University, Dave Epson and Jörn Fischer. Uh, the leverage point frameworks uh, uh, is like this. In order to move the system, is a metaphor and a heuristic, let's call it like that. Uh, it, it helps structuring thinking. And uh, when we deal with complex systems like the urban society, um, that the interventions on the system may not have the same uh, uh, pos potential to trigger change depending on where we make those interventions. And uh, the most easy and superficial levels of, uh, of leveraging change are the so-called parameters. The parameters are uh, numbers, laws, um, uh, which are very important, of course, um, tangible, uh, easily delimitable uh, uh, informations. Uh, for example, if we develop a, an urban development strategy and put it on the table, that can be a parameter also. Uh, the power of that document to leverage change, there is that power, but we see that in fact, uh, these this, this, this are largely inefficient because the urban areas are increasingly unsustainable despite all those strategies and investments in them. So let's go deeper a little bit, the feedbacks. Uh, the feedbacks are the interactions between the system components. In one hand, feedbacks exist between institutions and the society. The society may trust the institutions or not trust the institutions. And, uh, and this trust depends on the previous experiences. Feedbacks exist between the society and the nature, the natural environment. If I go out to a park and I like it, I go back and I want to see that park well managed. Or if I have a bad experience with a park, then I will avoid it. The, the thing is that the feedbacks are important and the nature of the feedbacks uh, can determine the efficiency of parameters. If we go deeper to the design, uh, the most uh, uh, beautiful example is this, that the institutional conjuncture around the urban uh, development strategy. If the strategies are developed by a str strongly sectorial um, way, they may not leverage uh, so big change than uh, if this uh, design is well, um, uh, well uh, planned and the society as a whole through its representants are there and the uh, key informations about uh, human nature relationships and how the society perceive the, the urban and peri-urban green spaces are missing. This should not be missing from the document. And uh, if we go deeper to, to intent, uh, that means the mindsets and paradigms uh, governing the, the decisions. Uh, we often experience that uh, that uh, uh, while we run a project, an urban development project or whatever uh, project in the urban area relevant for, for the green spaces, we, uh, <clears throat> this is the parameter, the project is the parameter. It is often, um, it, it is often uh, that during the project it come out uh, hidden intents of different uh, partners and this can cause surprises. So indeed uh, uh, more uh, uh, effort should be done to understand the intents of people and to in include that too somehow in the strategy, what, what you want. And uh, about the intents, nobody talk usually, and nor the design. The design is not questioned. Uh, the feedbacks are also not very questioned. So we go with the parameter. A parameter is that I, I, we counted all the large old trees inclusion. We have a map available, OK? That is a parameter, is, a, is an information. Uh, that, that, that is important, but this is not a guarantee for the sustainability of those trees. <clears throat> uh, the human nature connections, so we, let's go to the values more closely. Um, people, um, so uh, our colleagues um, from, uh, uh, from Leofana University created, based on a big literature review, uh, five types of, um, uh, of human nature connection um, uh, Way, uh, types, sorry for repeating. So um, uh, the material connections mean that people go out to harvest mushrooms, fruits, and whatever. These are the material connections. Cognitive, people go out to learn things and uh, 
uh, uh, learn about nature. For example, here in Cluj, we can find in the peri-urban area, even in the urban area, some wild area, some wild uh, natural uh, uh, places where uh, kids and people can learn about ecosystem processes. And, um, and uh, this can be used uh, for this knowledge for urban sustainability. The experiential, emotional and philosophical types of connections are also increasingly visible, although nobody studied them, or the concepts themselves are, are new, uh, uh, proposed in 2017. So there is some time till uh, it is penetrated in the, in the academic thinking. But um, our experience in Cluj uh, suggests that uh, working together with uh, some ni nice architects is that um, they are um, uh, willing um, to, to these types of, uh, of concepts because uh, by architectural design, you can facilitate more mindfully the different types of human nature connections. So it's good to have in your mind the possible types of these uh, values and connections in order to, to make more mindful uh, uh, plans. Um, our our uh, goal isn't it is to reconnect people uh, with nature and to develop uh, sustainable behaviors and uh, cultures and value systems. Uh, so from a leverage point perspective, uh, this is how the different uh, uh, human nature connections are situated. The material connections have a low capacity to leverage change, relatively low, while the philosophical, emotional uh, uh, types of connections have deep, uh, higher potential to leverage sustainability change. Unfortunately, we do not know anything about this in, the, for example, in, in the cities of Romania. Uh, studies in this respect would be very useful. There are also the, the relational types of value. What is the relational value? I'm looking to the, how much is uh, time I have? Sorry, Alex. About 15 more minutes. 15 more minutes, thank you. Uh, so the relational values are, uh, are those types of values which are, are um, um, for example, the identity is a relational value. It's very difficult to, to call it a, a, um, an eco cultural ecosystem service because the identity is something which is happening between the person and the place. Uh, and uh, so uh, the relational values are also uh, beautifully manifested in the urban areas. And in the next uh, uh, slides, I will show you some examples on these values, a little bit chaotic because uh, the goal is to inspire future research and thinking. Uh, there is a, an interesting concept, the seeds of good Anthropocene. Uh, this is um, also a very new concept and uh, it brings together uh, it means those types of activities, which are um, or initiatives, which if uh, amplified, uh, they can trigger sustainability change. And um, indeed, uh, every every town is full with such actions uh, uh, coming from high schools who we, uh, or or schools who, who want to adopt trees or going out to to do things uh, for the urban area in a voluntary work. These types of seeds. Um, represent also uh, emerging, pro emerging system properties and can be uh, understood, typologized and, uh, and used toward uh, triggering sustainability change. Uh, because this are, uh, show, shows that the value systems in the local communities are changing toward sustainable. Uh, so here, um, here are some examples of uh, from uh, the gardens uh, in the front of blocks in, uh, in, from Cluj. Several people uh, put their fi cultural fingerprints on those green spaces and from their own uh, resources, financial ref resources and creativity design those uh, small spaces uh, <clears throat> to be pleasant and uh, beautiful. Um, uh, my, my student, uh, Tomas, uh, studied this um, gardens in Georgien in a, in a down in Eastern Carpathians to understand the motivations of people. He find out that uh, people spend uh, around 70 to 150 lei per year in maintaining these gardens. They use their own water and, um, and they know a lot of uh, plants, animals, birds uh, going around there. They monitor the soil of the urban area. They notice that several plants which are uh, uh, 
10 years ago survived, now they are not surviving anymore. And when we ask them about um, uh, how they feel they, the social appreciation, they feel appreciated by the neighbors. And uh, if we ask about help, uh, what kind of help you need, uh, they say we need expert knowledge uh, to, to guide us on uh, which plants to select because they face sometimes or increasingly that, that plants which uh, survived in the past now uh, with climate change, um, are not surviving anymore. But, uh, but um, for example, an association which bring together these people could uh, represent a very nice design type of leverage to, to gain those uh, resources what they want uh, because these guys are working for free for doing a, a beautiful neighborhood for us and what we enjoy. Uh, <clears throat> this is a, from my balcony, sorry, no, I don't have better pictures, but but old houses in the town, uh, which, uh, which with their orchards, large old trees and uh, little gardens, nowadays are, perce are conceptualized in a Sweden, Swedish literature, <clears throat> or starting from that as so urban social ecological packages. There is so much information and sustainability potential in these houses. And also there is a, a strong relational value. Those people uh, are attached to those house, houses. The, the old orchard trees from there uh, also have extraordinary identity value and legacy value. And uh, these little social ecological packages are biodiversity hotspots. Uh, for example, in this green space, 15 uh, bird species are uh, regularly uh, singing and breeding, nesting, which is a beautiful number. And um, from a sustainability perspective, it, it was demonstrated that these this, uh, little um, packages can serve, uh, uh, have a significant input to food security, uh, to, of urban spaces during food shortages. Therefore, uh, we need to uh, make more research to understand how this applies in different towns and uh, how the owners of this, uh, what kind of challenges the owners have or face in order to sustain their properties. A beautiful uh, uh, natural park in a peri-urban area of uh, Bucharest, also as a manifestation of the initiative uh, uh, of the of the social, civil society to protect nature, not just for the sake of nature, but also for the society. Uh, out uh, going outside to uh, cognitively develop students, uh, teach them about nature and experiencing uh, forest and. Uh, <clears throat> The Somej Delivery in Cluj uh, project is an extraordinary example of uh, a seed of good Anthropocene. Um, they make interventions uh, along Somesh and uh, in, in strategically well-designed places where the interventions are not aggressive, but are uh, key bridges to form links between uh, people and uh, their environment. So people go in uh, places, sit down and enjoy the river, the nature, uh, what they would not do if those structures are not there. The mayor of Cluj-Napoca, the municipality of Cluj-Napoca put uh, uh, several places uh, in parks of Cluj where people come together and make sports. This is, these are arenas of relational value formation and enjoying nature. And it's good to see how different generations meet there uh, and respect each other in uh, making these exercises. Also the relational values and experiential values uh, can be manifested through this, uh, let's say a new, new urban culture. Of course, it can be damaging for trees, but with proper, uh, proper interventions can be, trees can be protected. And uh, also uh, this kind of initiatives can be, um, how to say, understood and uh, used to foster sustainab uh, sustainability change. This is our uh, map of large old trees from Cluj-Napoca. We inventoried each large old tree, and now we are making the parameters, the documents to declare some of them protected. Uh, we know that protection status will not guarantee their survival, but there is a small step in uh, this respect. 
Such initiatives also can matter because they provide information for the people. Uh, people knowing about these trees, they go out with kids, uh, uh, high schools, uh, uh, kindergartens to experience larger trees. This is also an interesting uh, fashion, uh, the urban parks. The, the, what I want to say with this, that there are several uh, social behaviors and manifestations which shows that people care about nature. Unfortunately, not every activity is sustainable. For example, the urban uh, experience park, uh, adrenaline park, or how to call them, I don't know, uh, in English, um, are uh, also causing a lot of damages to the, to the environment. Um, there is a also an interesting way to map the values of people called participatory GIS. Uh, uh, this is quite new, how to say, uh, uh, way of engaging people to map uh, the different uh, values across the town. And uh, you can create value maps uh, for walking, for relaxation, for silence, for, and uh, these value maps also can uh, have a great contribution to to urban sustainable development projects because they are built on the people's values. Um, here is a, I, I will not have time, unfortunately, to uh, go through this. Uh, this is a, a, a slide from our uh, uh, recent project uh, of a small uh, peri-urban forest in Cluj. We inventoried the in, uh, ecosystem service potential of the different forest uh, structure, structural elements. For example, the Douglas fir uh, is, an, is a non-native uh, tree, uh, provides a lot of timber, but in every other value is uh, relatively restricted, while the more wild areas uh, have much more to offer in different perspective. But if we look to the demand of uh, people for those values, we see that there is a demand for scenic beauty and recreation, and no demand exists for biodiversity, cognition, or non-timber products. So people don't go in that forest to learn, to experience the forest, they, uh, to, 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 be, uh, to experience it Well, they go it, but this is the thing that they, they bring a culture which is uh, unsustainable in this area. Look, uh, for example, a habitat of a, a protected amphibian full with, uh, with all kinds of house, uh, uh, garbage coming out from houses, uh, fridge uh, or beds and uh, toilets uh, and so on. So you can see the presence of people everywhere and the bad signs of it also. Uh, so the last slide is uh, mainstreaming values in urban sustainability research and practice. This is a proposal of fra research framework, how to say. First, we need a holistic urban green uh, uh, strategies uh, urgently because, uh, because the human pressure on the urban areas and peri-urban green areas, sorry, uh, is increasing. Uh, we need science society partnerships for this where we can uh, create that design where the scientists and practitioners and institutional representatives, NGOs interact. So these are the communities of practice where a lot of innovation can come out. Currently they doesn't exist, but they are needed. And then universities should allocate genuine space for transdisciplinary activities. Currently, for example, the right current curricula don't allow too much engagement with the society. People are overloaded with all kinds of duties within the university. We are very sectorial and disciplinary still. So the one package of work would be understand the ecology of the green spaces. Uh, we need hardcore ecological research of all kinds. Then. We need to understand how people value all those uh, green spaces. We need to understand the seeds of good anthropocene, what kind of initiatives exist in the system and how they link to the green spaces and how they inspire each other. Uh, we can use these uh, seeds as um, to build scenarios for future, uh, the future of the urban space. Uh, if there will be a good future of the uh, urban area, this, that future will root in the current uh, good practices and seeds. So we need to understand somehow this. And we need to uh, integrate all this research in the conventional urban development plan. We need to spare more genuine time for uh, space, sorry, in the urban uh, development plans uh, for, uh, for the people's values. <clears throat> 
And uh, all this activity is in fact within the leverage point perspective is a, a real parameters, feedback, design, intent. So all can be uh, categorized. Um, sorry, I am out now. Too much? No, you're perfectly on time, actually. Uh, sorry. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, please uh, put me questions. I was a little bit chaotic. Uh, I know. This was the same. Uh, according to my watch, according to my watch, you are actually very much on time. Okay. Uh, one, one second. Sorry, that's uh, that's how we deal now with the the pandemic. I know <laughs> a phone is ringing in, in any other room. Um, okay, so uh, thank you very much. Uh, I think it was a wonderful presentation, and I think it was linked very very well to. Um, Maria Albach's presentation because she actually says several times that we need to have a lot of research and what you've shown us is a, a very big uh, part of research that is looking on um, this, uh, this uh, special aspects of uh, our um, landscape, uh, landscape heritage and the sustainability of urban uh, landscapes. So thank you for, for showing us a different perspective of, of, of this topic, uh, which okay. is uh, uh, which is uh, cultural landscapes as um, the, the, also the title of the panel. Uh, we do have several questions, and uh, if you agree, I would also uh, would already like to to put them. Uh, where where I can see them? Um, for now, I only have them on my laptop. My colleagues oh, okay. are sending oh. them all to me, and I gather them to 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 ask them. Um, to to ask you ask you these questions. So, um, what strategies should be implemented in an urban environment such as Cluj, where we increase biodiversity? And this question comes from a landscape and ecology point of view. So, what kind of strategies we need to implement in Cluj? In an urban environment such as Cluj. Yes. So, well, um, what I would suggest is this that. Um, uh, we need to delineate the, the so Cluj, Cluj let's let's call let's see Cluj as a as a, as an area like a river and the green spaces and the periurban spaces like the flooded area. Sometimes people are going out and flood, and uh, well, uh, thinking in this way, and they will do that with the lockdown. Everyone will. Uh, uh, we need to prepare those pat pets of going out and we need to think more mindfully about what kind of natural values we have and we would like to maintain. So in this respect, uh, for example, I see the following compartmentization of, uh, of green space use in Cluj. First, we, we, we need to have those kinds of spaces where people can go out and uh, have fun more or less uh, controlled way, without, without garbage and big noises, but, but more active. Uh, we need spaces where, um, where we, we protect uh, habitats and, uh, and species because those are those ecosystem uh, machineries which generate uh, a lot of services to, to the urban area. We need wildlife. We need uh, corridors for, uh, for wild and ecological processes to happen. And then um, we need to uh, also delineate certain intermediate places where people can go out uh, even by with motorbikes or whatever. I don't know, uh, many will not like what I say, but, but we need to somehow create for all kinds of desire, desires. Uh, uh, right now, I, spaces, I think in Cluj, this is possible. For example, we have Natura 2000 sites around Cluj. Okay, those are exist existent already. We can um, decide, but not we. We need the intent up up there in the governance. They must decide that let let's let's declare those really protected and and manage them as a protected area, where we where people can go walking and uh, and for learning and experiencing the silence and nature. Uh, so the thing is this that. We need to integrate a lot of nice activities in Cluj for urban green spaces into one coherent strategy. I don't see that strategy now, but, but that doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. It, it is maybe hidden in the design somewhere, but, 
so I'm sorry if it exists already, but that strategy must, must be based on science somehow. Let's bring evidence, uh, all the available evidences about the proportions of lands, uh, what we need to have uh, also space for nature and for people. So in theory, this is possible. In practice, it depends on the institutions and the intent, the deep leverages. I totally agree with it. Um, actually, we had a, a question, two questions uh, actually, which we very much relate to your answer. I will ask them so, uh, and I would like to ask you if you have anything uh, much more to, to add to, to the, the questions. Uh, these were, how do you think we can integrate nature, not just vegetation to our cities? And what the advice of an ecologist regarding this type of planning, what, what it would be? So if you already answered it, uh, and you would like yes, to yes. add? Well, what I will do is the following. Uh, it, this is possible. There are um, different indexes but developed by ecologists called natural indexes, okay? There are different ecosystem physiognomies, processes, habitats, structures, species, assemblages, whatever, uh, according to which you can uh, develop categories of, of naturalness. So if we have that for Cluj and the periurban areas, we have a good starting point. We have a good starting point. We don't have that right now. That's the problem. Uh, that's why basically, even if, if it is well-intentioned, uh, many projects can be damaging for, for unknown values. Uh, so what I will do now from tomorrow uh, to bring together uh, as the best scientists, we are in Cluj, the best scientists, to develop together that map of naturalness and ecosystem service provision. And based on that, to develop everything else. Uh, that, so this is, is theoretically and practically possible. It doesn't, if there is intent, the intent is needed, the deep leverage, that is the single needed thing. Well, we hope uh, things will change uh, as soon as possible. But until then, how long it takes to restore, an, uh, to restore an urban degraded or lost ecosystem? It depends. Uh, if it is in the third, depends how we call restoration and the means how we do it. If we go through the natural processes, like let the nature recolonize it uh, and passive restoration is slower in the center of Cluj, for example. Uh, and is faster in the periurban areas. So the thing is this, that depends on the position of the restorable land, depends on the natural capital assets from, of that land, if there are seeds, if there are species which can be used to enhance the system. And um, so, um, but the time anyway can take, uh, if, if, we, if we talk about nature, it can take a lot of time. Because when we say nature, we don't speak about few trees and the grass uh, there. This is not nature. Nature means ecosystem processes, pollinators, stratified vegetation, rich leaf litter, soil formation, these mechanisms. You can destroy it in just a few weeks, as we see around Cluj everywhere, but they will regenerate in decades. Imagine the trees should come back. The trees come back, they make leaves, they make roots, they start to, this is whatever, long time. So it's a very compli complicated and complex. Uh, Eco uh, ecosystems are the most complex systems of the universe. <laughs> um, the, relating to that, uh, there are cultural and environmental issues um, that have to be solved. Uh, when you deal uh, with the restoration of a cultural landscape of a, or of a historic garden. So you have two types of values. You have the cultural and the, the natural. Um, uh, have you ever encountered such, uh, such issues? And can you, can you elaborate on how you dealt with them? I don't know who put this question, but uh, I have a friend who is putting this kind of question. But don't tell me. Don't, it's not a... <laughs> So the, there is this phenomena of shifting baseline syndrome, which is in fact translated in the cultural differences. For example, we see in East Parkour Est in Cluj or in other areas that, um, but not is not restricted to Cluj, uh, where people have different uh, imaginations on how, how nature can look and that 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 we reflect their own experience what, 
with so-called nature. And uh, uh, so that experience is skewed. And uh, the shifting baseline syndrome can cause cultural barriers and uh, noise in restoration because not everybody perceives nature as we perceive ecologists, and we should accept that. The thing is the following, that um, with argu good arguments, experiencing natural systems and thinking and openness to discuss, uh, we can solve this. Uh, I can tell you uh, the, uh, the personal experience with Cluj, we in the team had architects and also ecologists and hardcore, uh, meaning very well designed and placed somehow. And um, interestingly, initially there were certain conflicts because the perspectives differed, uh, more nature, less nature, whatever. But later on, uh, people started to internalize each other's arguments and uh, there, there seem to be three steps uh, what we need to pass. The first is when we fight with each other, it's good to not split in, to not let things uh, stopping there. The fighting is natural because we are confronting the paradigms in that moment. Then the le next level is the socialization. Let's keep being open and learn from each other. And then the internalization when we, we indeed can resonate. And, uh, and, and if the intentions are good, again, back to the intent, this design thing can, can work. If the intentions are not open and good, they, 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 it will never work. That's the point. I cannot change your intentions. So we should not start communicating with swords. We should use words instead. We need to, to use words and, uh, and very good uh, uh, convincing examples, arguments. I totally, and, I totally and to agree. be well-intentioned. You should be, my job is not to convince that you are wrong. My job is to learn how you think and let's find, co-create something together. <laughs> well, I think everyone here uh, uh, totally agrees with, uh, with this statement. Um, we, we have a very interesting question. Um, comparing Romania to Germany. Uh, what are the major problems facing Germany in relation to uh, the issues addressed? at this time, and how many of the problems we have in Romania um, are also found in Germany? Can you uh, elaborate a bit? Uh, what is very nice in Romania, by the way, is that you can easily reach a decision maker. In Germany, that is not possible to reach a decision maker and even drink a coffee with, with her or him. This is the good aspect of the chaos because we are still in, in a forming system, a maturing system. Uh, another interesting is, uh, thing is that, uh, for example, in our projects, uh, the policy reports and dialogues are more most richest compared to the Westerns, where it's so difficult to bring policymakers. Uh, there, the people and the landscapes seem to be more alienate, alienated from each other. Uh, for example, people to experience what we experience here in Cluj, rare protected amphibians, just half, half minutes of walking, they go 500 kilometers for that. So the social ecological system is so broken and the restorative potential is eroded that, uh, that uh, but also the people are more open because of this to, to nature experience. So that there are um, complementary uh, the, the system is more rigid in Germany, more strict, more rigid. Here, the system is much more fluid and it provides more opportunities, I think. We need just to trigger change in values somehow in the society. Um, thank you very much. Um, I think we have time for one more question. We already started having a lot of them and that's why I'm shifting towards uh, different screens. Um, so I propose we just ask one more and then we yes. move to uh, the next speaker, uh, but we will gather all, info, all the questions and we will answer in, in time to everyone. So I hope no one will be offended by not um, having his or her, and her uh, question uh, publicly on, uh, on Facebook at this moment. Um, do you think there is a place for traditional ecological knowledge originating in rural areas in the development of uh, urban sustainability ideas? Um, let's don't call it uh, traditional ecological knowledge. Uh, let's call it local ecological knowledge. And the answer is big yes. 
uh, all those people who are moving from rural areas here, like my neighbors down who are old and uh, come with that, that knowledge and adapted it to the urban areas and continue to learn. So this is hard to believe that this is traditional. It's a local knowledge, ecological knowledge, which is highly valuable. And I feel that in inclusion of Bucharest, this type of knowledge capital is so rich that we cannot even imagine that uh, if we would assess that, we will understand that most of the people could, uh, we can turn things sustainable. Uh, fast. So yes, yes, my, my answer is yes. I will change traditional ecological knowledge to ecological knowledge. And thank you very much. Uh, as I said, we have several more questions, but I propose we stop now. Um, before we go to our next speaker, um, it seems, uh, well, we invite you to, to stay together with us if, if that's possible. Thank you. Um, uh, Raluca and Alex, you, Alex, you are excellent moderator. Thank you very much. Raluca, thank you very much for inviting me. I, I will remain. But thank I you very much you. for your talk and for all the interesting things you have said. I think we, we've all learned a lot from, from you and I hope we will have all, all of us attending this conference have the opportunity to work with people such as you and Maria and uh, Frank Benwell. I really hope thank that you. will be the case in the future and in the near thank future, actually.